Hello, uh, I'm Jeff with Castile Property Management, and we're here with Ken from Prigmore Law. Yes. And we're here to talk about how real um, estate planning um, can help uh, investors, uh, primarily real estate investors, um, in protecting them from from such things as lawsuits and and passing their estate onto onto their uh, onto. <laughs> Passing it on to the people that, that are in, going to be inheriting it, their family and such. So, right, um, Ken, tell us tell us about yourself and and what you do. Well, I'm an estate planning attorney. I've been practicing law since 2006, and uh, you know, there's a lot of different types of law. Some attorneys just they just love the courtroom, love the drama. That's not me. So, I, I love the paperwork. I love keeping people out of court, and so the documents I prepare, the things that we talk about. Will help people to avoid the drama. Nice, yeah. And we, um, uh, my wife and I actually met with you recently because we needed to update our estate planning. It was twelve years old or something, and we realized as we were looking over it, everything was so outdated. And um, and I I can tell you it was a it was a really nice process. We sat down and and it was fun. Uh, you made it easy and comfortable, and and we're able to talk about all those things that sometimes are uncomfortable to talk about. But it, it went really well, and we we're really happy. Thank you. So so that's why we wanted to ask you to come do this video with us today, because we we can tell that's your expertise. It's and it's your passion. It is. Um, which which is really nice. Um, I my myself as a property manager, I I get really passionate about property management, and it's fun to talk about. It's fun to see the scenarios. It's fun to to work on the system to, to keep problems from happening. And we could see that in you too. And so that's, you know, we felt like it was a really, a really good match. And we, and I thought my, my clients could benefit from your expertise as, as an estate planner. Um, one, one thing that we, that we talked about and some, some of my clients do and others don't, and probably more should is put their real estate investment in an LLC. So, how how does how does that work? Why why would they want to do an LLC? And and I guess what is an LLC? Sure. Well, when you purchase a rental property, it's not the house you live in. Uh, you may not want to put that in your trust, uh, especially if you're going to be doing business with that house. The LLC is a great way to reduce your liability when you do business through any sort of a rental. Uh, if if you were to rent out a property and you kept that property in your personal name and something happened, someone was injured and there's a lawsuit, they're going to be able to sue you personally and they'll access your personal assets, your home, whatever you have. But if you have an LLC and they're doing business with an LLC, they can only sue the LLC. And so it stops there and you're protecting yourself and the rest of your assets. Okay. so. Because I've seen some of my clients actually have their investment property in their trust, and you're saying that's not the way they should be doing it. Not directly. You can have the trust be a member of the LLC. Oh, okay. And that, that's an option. It just depends on how you want to handle taxes. Some people prefer to just have it be a single member LLC. They like having it be a pass-through organization that is uh, easy to do taxes with. They just do normal taxes on the income. So what, what, are, what are some things... Um, Let's say an investor has an LLC set up and their property, the, the title on the property is recorded in that LLC. Is, is that it? Is that all they need to do to keep that, that barrier of liability between the, all on that property and away from their personal assets? And That's a good question. Uh, so uh, when, when you have someone that sues you and they're trying to access your personal assets, uh, and you, if you do have an LLC there, they're going to try to get past that LLC. And that's called piercing the corporate veil. And uh, the way they do that is they look for ways to show that it's not really an official LLC, it's just your back pocket. So if you if you're, have the property in an LLC on the deed, that's step one. Uh, but step two is where does the money go? If, if a renter is paying money directly to you and you're putting it in your personal bank account, then it's hard to argue that the LLC is doing business with the renter because it's just your money. Instead, if you get a tax ID number, a federal tax ID number, and then create a bank account, and then have the money come directly to that bank account before it comes to you, now they're doing business with the business. So that's step two. Uh, after that, uh, they'll still look for ways to argue that there isn't any supporting paperwork. 
So having created the LLC, you filed articles of incorporation uh, or organization, but that's not enough. You want to have an operating agreement. You want to have minutes, uh, the original minutes for the first year and then every year after that. Uh, things like that are going to create a, a, a very clear separation between you and your business. Oh, okay. So I, I've heard the, the minutes for an S Corp, but you're saying we should do that for an LLC also. Yes, absolutely. Just to, just to keep that corporate veil more bulletproof. Right. And, and when you mention an S Corp, that's, that's usually used as a, a tax opportunity based on an LLC. And so you filed something with the IRS that shows that your LLC is being taxed as an S Corp, but, but it's th the other paperwork is necessary as well. Okay. So how does it work? Say somebody has their investment properties in an LLC um, and they also have a trust, but then they, but then when they die, obviously everything in the trust is set up for when they die, but is everything in the LLC set up for when they die? Right. That, there's usually a gap there. Uh, so if, if your trust isn't the sole member of the LLC, then at your death, we're going to have an LLC interest that's still in your name. So I prepare a document called a transfer on death that states my interest in this LLC at my death goes to the trust. And so that fills in the gap. And we're, we're going to be passing on both the LLC and anything that's owned by the LLC, including any real estate that you've put in it. So sometimes it's just, it's just a matter of planning ahead and having the paperwork done correctly. Yes. To avoid all those problems when, when the inevitable happens. Right, right. If, if you don't plan ahead, if you don't fill out these documents and, and talk to an estate planning attorney, uh, we'll still be able to deal with these things, but we'll have to do it through probate. It'll take longer, it'll cost more, and often it gives others uh, an opportunity to throw monkey wrenches in there and cause problems. Okay. That makes a lot of sense because it... it in, <laughs> Sometimes in sitting down and trying to think through it all, I've, I've been confused often. And that's why I like bringing in professionals where it's, you know, my profession, my expertise is property management, but I don't know everything about law. I, I know very little about estate planning, you know, other than just I know enough to know that I don't know enough. And, and so that's where it's nice to surround yourself with experts and say, OK, if there's an estate planning, you know, legal issue or how to do LLCs or, or things, that's where I come and talk come and talk to you and, and where you can help out our clients. So happy to do it. So that that's really, really a nice resource that we we enjoy having. And because of that, I'm glad that we we ended up um, meeting. Um, let's see here. Now, you talked about a tax ID number or an EIN, right? Yes. So what what is that? What, how, how is that? Why is that so important? What is that? Um, it's, it's very similar to your social security number, but it's the number that identifies your business and it's separate from you. Uh, that's the benefit of, of getting one and setting up a, a bank account with a tax ID number is, uh, it's when, when taxes have to be filed, it's, it's another business that's separate. Uh, and when there's a lawsuit, it's, it's not going to be your assets that are at risk. Okay. So one, one other scenario I've, I've seen before is, um, an investor that has uh, many properties. And, you know, the question was presented, well, if I put all of my investment properties in this LLC, what am I really protecting? Because now I have more assets in my LLC than I do personally. And so how, how does an investor avoid, avoid that? problem. You're exactly right. Uh, it, everything that's in that LLC is at risk. So there's a couple of things you can do to avoid it. Uh, one of those is to create multiple LLCs. If you have separate entities owning each property and each one is doing business with a particular tenant, then when someone sues, they're only going after that single asset. Another way to step it even further back, and this is something you'll probably need help from your CPA with, is to have two LLCs, one that holds the property, one that does business with the tenant. Mm -hmm. And the one doing business with the tenant can actually rent the property from the owning LLC as the original tenant, and then the new tenant is the subtenant. <laughs> it, it gets complicated. <laughs> it gets complicated. <laughs> well, and again, that's why, we, that's why we bring around professionals and say, okay, Ken, 
walk me through this. Am I doing this right? Do I have this paperwork right? Am I thinking about it correctly? And that's that's where that, that kind of upfront work is so much easier than correcting the problem after after it hits the fan. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I've got some interesting calls when when people have had it hit the fan and it's too late. Yeah. So. Can just off the top of your head, can you think of any of your most memorable cases or scenarios of uh, just uh, ones that stick stick out to you? Either one that that was unfortunate or went really well or or could have been prevented. Just something that really really grabs at your memory. Um. The, the first one that comes to mind is uh, a few months ago, I got a call from a gentleman uh, up in Salt Lake and he said, I am being sued and I'm wondering if I'm too late. And the short answer was yes, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, he, he owned his, his property in his personal name. There's no LLC involved. And his tenant, who was apparently a, a nice person, easy to deal with, lost their pet, their dog. The dog was wandering the streets until a good Samaritan found them and they must have had ads up so that they knew that this was the person's dog and this was their address. So the good Samaritan picked up the dog, took it to this person's house, which of course is owned by the landlord. And they walked on the property and they knocked on the door. And the tenant answered the door and said, oh, you found my dog, thank you. And the good Samaritan said, no problem and handed the dog over Whereupon the dog turned around and bit the Good Samaritan, and the Good Samaritan was injured. Now it's time for a lawsuit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, the Good Samaritan sued, uh, <clears throat> and they, they sued the owner of the property, which they could. And so my client was suddenly on the hook, and he said, my insurance only goes up to about $40,000. And he said, uh, the lawsuit already looks like it's going to be well beyond that. And, and so I'm going to be personally liable. Is, is there any way to put it in an LLC now? And it's, mm. it's too late. You, you can't yeah. get it back into the bottle. So uh, this is something you want to do in advance and prepare for. And it was unfortunate for him. He will be doing business differently in the future, but it's going to cost him several thousand dollars. Oh. And, and he should have better insurance. Right, right. To to that, that was agent. a very limited amount of insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really low. Um, well, that's good to know. So we, we've talked a lot about LLCs, but that's not all you do, is it? You, as we said, you do estate planning. Right. And I guess that involves trusts and uh, wills um, and such things. So um, tell us a little bit about the importance uh, of a trust and a will. Or do you need one or the other? Or do you need both? Or how, how does that how does that fit into the, the planning ahead? Great question. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If your sole goal is to make sure someone inherits something from you eventually, you don't have to do anything at all if it's your children or your spouse. Uh, they're, they're going to eventually receive it under state law. Unfortunately, because the property that we're dealing with on public records, like a deed, if it's only in your name, they can't have it immediately. They still have to go through a court process where the judge names someone who has authority to sign a personal representative's deed to transfer it to you. So with nothing at all, they might still get it if those are the people you want to inherit, but they're gonna to have to pay for probate. Mm -hmm. And that does cost more and take longer. Uh, the other option is to do a will, and the will at least specifies who's going to receive it. It might not be your wife or your children. Although if you don't give it to your surviving spouse, they have a significant claim they can make. So. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. After the will, we have the idea, let's, let's avoid probate altogether. And if we want to do that, then we're putting property in the trust. If you put your property in the trust, then uh, the trust is going to be the owner of it when you die, and it'll be separate from your estate. So if you have a bank account that's still in your name at your death, uh, and you have your house that's in the trust, when you die, we have an estate in your name that includes the bank account, but not the house. Uh, so I encourage my clients to put all of their property in the trust, either right now through deeds, for example, with your house, or at your death through uh, naming a pay-on-death beneficiary in your bank account, for example. There's, there's a lot of things you can do, but it's hard to do it and describe it in five seconds. Sure, you know? yeah. Uh, but, but doing that, if you prepare it correctly, you'll avoid probate, it'll go smoothly, you'll decide who's going to be in charge, who runs things, 
And with a trust, you can determine when all that happens. A will happens at death, but a trust can happen 100 years from now if you wanted to. All right. And so, and by doing this, it avoids all family conflict, right? Oh, I wish. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's, it's impossible to stop people from trying to sue. Yeah. But if we do this right, they can't win. Yeah. And, and if they talk to a good attorney, they'll know they can't win. And so it, it does stop the lawsuit. Yeah. Well, that's, that's important. Again, the planning ahead and talking to the right people. So we've, we've talked about changing or putting properties in LLCs and trust accounts. And, and that all sounds, sounds great and necessary and important. Um, but most people have a, a third party involved in their home, the mortgage company. So how, how can, does the mortgage company care if we change who owns the property? The answer is it depends. It depends. Yeah. Right. And there's a couple circumstances. If you create a trust and, it, and you put your house in it and you have a mortgage in your name, the lender is going to want to see your name on any deeds that go forward. And when I prepare a deed to put a house in a trust, I've also created the trust in the name of the client. So, uh, you know, John and Jane Doe Family Trust. Uh, when, when a lender sees that, they say, oh, well, we lent money to John and Jane Doe, and now we can see it's the John and Jane Doe Family Trust. We don't have a problem with it. Uh, title companies are dealing with this all the time. If someone's refinancing or whatever else, uh, they will communicate with the lender to see if they want to lend you the money through your trust or lend it to you individually. And if they don't want to lend directly to your trust, the title company can easily record a deed, taking it out of the trust and putting it in your name. Then they record the loan and then they record another deed, putting it back in the trust. Okay. <laughs> and it's very common. Some of those, some of those hoops to jump through. Does, yep. Is it any, um, I, my, my background is many years ago, I used to be a loan officer. And for whatever reason, I've still never been able to figure out, lenders seem to have more of a problem when it's an LLC versus a trust. A trust, they seem to be like, oh yeah, that's we, we get that. An LLC, they seem to throw up all these red flags and, and some lenders will even just say no. Uh, and some lenders will let you work through it. And it, it, it do, you, do you have any insight on, on why that is? Why lenders might, might have a problem with that? Absolutely. So uh, it, it's very unusual for someone to sell a trust or ownership in a trust, uh, but it's common to sell an LLC. Mm -hmm. And so the lender wants to know who they're doing business with. Right. If you put the property in your LLC and then you sell the LLC or transfer it to someone else in some other way, they won't know the difference. And there's no way for them to know for sure who the members are because members don't have to be reported on state records. Mm -hmm. Only managers and registered agents have to be reported. So, so can that still be done to put it in an LLC? Or Only if you borrow through in the name of the LLC okay. with the lender. And that does happen, yeah. uh, often with business loans. Oh, okay. So I, I know in some cases, I think some people just do it and, and, and it doesn't come up. It, it, and, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Right. And that's always one of those things where, you know, if you want to look at it and if you want to ask the lender and if you want to follow your your uh, agreement with the lender, you, you probably shouldn't. If you're looking at liability, you probably should. <laughs> I, I counsel my clients to avoid it at all costs. Yeah. Uh, but I, I talked to a client whose friend did it. Uh, and shortly after he had obtained a loan, he turned around and recorded a deed, putting it into an LLC. Well, the lender, this, this was less than two months after the loan had closed. The lender wanted to look and make sure that the deeds were recorded correctly. So they looked at the account and they saw that and they called the loan due. So it can happen. All right. Well, some things to look into, some things to consider. And again, uh, as I've said several times, it just comes down to talk to your lender, talk to the estate planner, talk to your property manager, talk to your real estate agent, make sure you have all the right information, talk to your title company. And, um, and then make the decision that based on the expert advice that you get from the different sources. So, well, thank you, Ken. Uh, Ken with Prigmore Law. Um, what's your website address? Uh, PrigmoreLaw.com. PrigmoreLaw.com. Yeah. All right. And, um, and I'll certainly be referring people to you as they uh, will be, we'll be putting out this video and sharing it with a lot of our clients. And hopefully that'll bring you some business as I, as I know my clients need your expertise. Um, 
And if you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. And um, at Castile Property Management, we do more than just watch your rental property. We protect it, cultivate it, and help your investment grow.